Thank you. New technologist for ultrasonic cleaning. <clears throat> this slide made sense when I uh, wrote it just after my the talk I gave about eight hours ago, because I used the same colour scheme for faculties as I did as I did then, but obviously it's, it's, there's been a few hours since then, it's not quite so clear. What I've got here in colour coding are the, are the people that have used this technology, um, underlined are the, the ones who have actually used it, and the ones who are not underlined are the ones that are queuing up to use it. And I think it just goes to show that not only are these great co-authors, um, but it, it's a technology that has spread with a lot of people wanting to use it. So what is this technology? Um, it's about cleaning. Now there are a number of uh, technologies that uh, people use for cleaning. There's also some cleaning baths shown by this thing on the left here. And there's pressure washers. And the problem with these is that uh, so the problems can be summed up in size, soup, spray and shred. Um, you can't fit uh, a big thing like a person in also a cleaning bath. You can't fit anything in that's bigger than the bath. So you've got a size issue. You have a soup issue. Uh, if you are cleaning something in an ultrasonic bath, as you pull it out, it's covered in a soup of the, of the nasty gunk that you've just cleaned off it. Uh, and so it, it, it's still contaminated. With um, pressure washers, you get an aerosol. You wouldn't want to aerosol a sewage line, uh, because what happens is everything gets back in the air and then resettles on the stuff around you. Um, and uh, pressure washers tend to shred things. Um, so you wouldn't use them on wounds and organs and people and spray around the warty things. So, what did we come up with? Uh, this device here, um, and it's, uh, this, this particular prototype is, is manufactured by the company Ultrawave, and it produces a, a, a small spray of, uh, a small stream of water, only about a litre a minute, and within that litre of minute water, we, make, we send sound generated in this white horn at the bubbles that form down this spray of water. The bubbles are microscopic, and we, we make them dance like this and wriggle. And this works with just cold water straight from the tap, no soap, no additives. But these microscopic wriggling bubbles, that surface shears. It's got a scrubbing action. And so it's very good for getting rid of stuff, but crucially, what then goes down the tap doesn't contain any chemical signatures to tell you what, to give you any clues of what you used to put in there, which of course is very, very important when we're talking about ways to tackle antimicrobial resistance. Um, I can give you a picture of what's happening here by, we've got, we've got the stream on a piece of glass, we're looking out through the glass here, so that in this picture here, that's the rim of the stream. And I'm going to play this movie, and some bubbles are come, going to come down it, and you'll notice them wriggling as they hit the glass, and try and scrub in that glass clean. Here they come. Now watch them wriggle. You see? Eating up dirt. Now one thing that you might have noticed is they weren't washed away very quickly. And that's crucial. Because these bubbles don't just scrub, they actively seek out the hard to clean places. It's very easy to clean a flat surface. Where the problems come were the crevices. Because brushes and wipes, they don't get in the crevices. And that's a big problem. The bubbles, though, actively seek out these crevices. That's what they were doing in that last film when they weren't being washed off the surface. They were sticking to the surface, searching for crevices. Because the sound echoes around those little cracks and crevices, the way sound echoes around a cathedral, and it drags the bubbles in. And as they're being dragged in, the surfaces wiggle and they keep scrubbing. That's illustrated in this little... Uh, experiment here where we've got some plastic here, that's this clear stuff, and in it we've drilled a cylindrical hole about uh, I don't know, 20 microns wide and 100 microns deep. The bottom of the hole has a black little sensor, and that tells us whether the hole is dirty or clean. The bottom of the hole is dirty or clean. And this is the output of the sensor. And as we run the movie, this red line is going to drag along the, the, um, the, the screen, and we'll see, it, we'll see that it goes from um, dirty to clean. And that's going to happen when the bubbles reach the bottom. On the top of this surface, we've put a sticky contaminant. It was supplied by Corton Down. It's really sticky. And we've also stuffed it into this crevice. You can't see it's not black there because there's only 20 microns of <coughs> depth of it. So I'm going to play this movie, and you'll see, first of all, the top area is cleaned off, and then the bubbles find this crevice. And they don't leave it alone. They keep digging into it. So here we go. Top surface clean. And now the bubbles find the surface. And if you look carefully, they're wiggling and they're wiggling and they reach the bottom and it goes clean. So they're automatically finding this stuff and cleaning it. 
They also had another way of cleaning, because they'll clean with cold water perfectly well. You can clean with cold water and with no additives. But if you put a little bit of biocide, well, or antiseptic or something, into the water, normally that biocide only, only very slowly diffuses into the cracks. So you have to put a lot, a high concentration in the water for it to diffuse slowly into the cracks. But those bubbles will drag it into the cracks in their wakes. So you need only tiny amounts of biocide in the water to clean. So again, you can uh, lift these dirt out of the cracks, lift the contaminants out of the cracks, or you can uh, take some biocide into the cracks, either way. So let's see some examples. Here's hand cleaning. Cold water doesn't clean this luminous gel from the hand. Flip switch, turn on the sound of the bubbles, and it cleans. And why is it cleaning the cracks? Well, you can see in here, this is slowed down motion. You can see the bubbles rubbing around in the fingerprint. Sound off, and they do nothing. Sound on, and they wiggle. Sound off, and they do nothing. Sound off, and they do wiggle, and they wiggle in a minute. Here we go. That's where they go, and clean. Uh, why do we want to do this? Well, the Centre for Detail Control recommends that hands be washed for 20 seconds in warm, soapy water. In the UK, the average wash is six seconds in cold water. <coughs> And despite years and years and years of telling people, honestly, do the first thing, they do the second. We cannot change the behaviour of people. So, with this device, we change the water. If they insist on using six seconds of cold water, we make that six seconds of cold water really effective at cleaning. Let's have a look at some bacteria. So, these are three types of bacteria, and they've all got uh, the dental bacteria. And we're putting them in some... Um, etched areas, so they've got contours in, and here's three etched surfaces. You can see, you can barely see what the surface is in there, you've got uh, quite a lot of packed old biofilm there. And then. Right, wash with water, honestly, mm, you've still got a lot of remnant stuff here, you can see what the pattern is, you can't see anything there. All, all that, that's all filthy in there. Use this device to start stream, bam, 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 it's clean. Just cold water, and you can see the effect on teeth there where the bacteria begins to stain. So that's uh, before, that's cleaning with water, that's cleaning with this <coughs> star screen device. Um, also good at, uh, I have to say, look at the bottom corner for the people here who did the work. I, I, I'm just a pretty face. Um, this is grafting bone between people for reconstructive surgery. It's very important, but if you transfer bone from one person to another, you can get a, a rejection response. So, it's important that you clean the red mucky stuff and other stuff away from the pores in the honeycomb, honeycomb structure of the bone. This is the bone with no wash, and this is what you'd normally do, soak it for a week in hydrogen peroxide. It's pretty vile stuff. Um, a week's a long time to wait, so let's try 20 minutes in hydrogen peroxide. Doesn't do it. Now, 20 minutes in cold water, using Starstream. You clear it up as effectively as 20 minutes. So just think about money. This is as good as 20 minutes soaking hydrogen peroxide, yet it's safe to use on hands. So what's going on here? What are we, and, it, and it doesn't put anything down the sink that gives you a clue about what you use to get rid of the dirt. There's no clue at all for the rest of the environment to go out to develop resistance to. Nothing. Okay. Here's um, some salad. This is a basil leaf. And here's a microscopy. <coughs> the blue is bacteria, and this is washed in water. This is your salad, and that's post star stream. It's clean. This is rocket leaf. Um, th these are after treatment. This doesn't affect the shelf life. This is as you get it when you wash it. Water. This is star stream. It's clean. Just picks up that bacteria and move it. This is, um, again, keep looking at this bottom corner for who did the actual work. This is brain protein on stainless steel. So here we're worried about CJD contamination. This is the control. It's been brain, mouse brain protein has been steel and stain, uh, smeared on jet stainless steel. It's then been dried for 24 hours, which is a bad thing to do, but that's what happens if, say, you have your surgery on, if, if someone has a surgery on a Friday night and then people don't wash these stuff till Monday morning. Uh, it dries on, it's harder to wash. So, uh, dried for 24 hours. Water flow, it doesn't really get rid of it. Here's a second batch. Now we're going to use the cold water, just star stream, Kachingo gone. If you want graphs for this, we have papers for it, then I can supply. <coughs> so, what are we talking about here? You can use it with cold water, no additives, or with dilute chemicals. 
Why would you want to use cold water, no additives? Well, you get clean runoff. You're not just polluting the streams, but you're not putting any clues as to how you did the cleaning either. And that's key for antimicrobial resistance. You can work with water of opportunity. The, uh, we've got two being demonstrated out there, and they've been run all day with recycled water. Uh, it's pretty filthy water, and they seem to be about working at 5% efficiency, I think, that they do when they, compared to how they do when they run normally from the tap. But if all you've got is filthy water, it can work. Sometimes you want it, because you can't use chemicals and bleach. A lot of food cleaning, you can't use bleach, because people taste it. All you can do to clean out, uh, if you say you've got a Pepsi machine and you've got a, um, you, 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 uh, you know what I mean, you don't put bleach in food and for casual hand washers. Dilute chemicals, um, using the dilute chemicals, water is very heavy. You can lift it off without killing it to diagnose it, what it is afterwards, or kill it by adding chemicals. But I think the key thing here, the absolute key message is that this provides a fundamental challenge to microbes. It, it, it stops the attachment. If, when, when Fleming was, was a First World War medic, he was, he looked at trying to stuff wounds with antiseptics, and it made the patient worse because it killed their white blood cells. It made people worse, and that's why they then had to find antibiotics. Antiseptics are great. They do provide a fundamental challenge, but it's no good if they kill the mammalian cells. This seems to be a fundamental challenge on attachment that appears not to harm mammalian tissue, and yet it puts no clues into the environment for anything else to build resistance to. Thank you very much.